Welcome. This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number eight, Knowledge Graphs, part three. We are still in chapter 3.7 and this is an excursion because now in two excursions I'm going to introduce to you the two most popular knowledge bases which are publicly available, DBpedia and Wikidata. And we start here with DBpedia. Okay, DBpedia is one of the central hubs within the web of data, which means many of the other knowledge graphs which are interconnected in the web of data, they refer to DBpedia as a reference. So this means things, entities, which are denoted in uh, DBpedia, like in Wikipedia, like in a, an encyclopedia, they also serve as a reference for other, let's say, knowledge graphs and data sets, which there have, let's say, additional statements and knowledge about these entities, which are represented here in DBpedia. So it's a central hub of the web of data. As you, has, as you have already seen in the last lecture, which, which was generally on knowledge graphs, um, DBpedia has already established, or the first version was in 2007, and DBpedia is based on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is also not so much older, it's from 2001, so now 20 years old. Um, Wikipedia, of course, is one of the most popular web, web platforms and um, it's a huge online encyclopedia in many, many languages. And DBpedia directly is based on a specific language version of Wikipedia. So there is then also an English DBpedia, a German DBpedia, a French DBpedia, and so on. So in many languages, they are available and they have further developed over time. Okay, let's have a more closer look. So the numbers I have here are from statistics from January 2020. And in the current DBpedia version, in the English version that we are looking at, there are 6.6 .6 million entities, 6.6 .6 million things described, of which 5.5 million are classified in a consistent ontology. About the DBpedia ontology, we will talk soon. Um, overall, what you find there also are 1.5 million persons. So there's information about 1.5 million persons, which of course comes all from the English version of the Wikipedia. Moreover, you have information about 840,000 places. More than 500,000 among them are populated places like cities or villages. And around 500,000 creative works, and this includes more than 100,000 music albums, more than 100,000 films and even 20,000, 21,000 video games. You have knowledge about organizations, so there are almost 300,000 organizations, including 70,000 companies, 55,000 edu educational institutions, 306,000 species, 6,000 diseases, and so on and so on. And there are, as you see here, 125 localized DBpedia versions with now overall 38.3 million things described. So this is already huge. And of course, you can make use of it. As another example, there is, for example, also the German language chapter, which maintains the German DBpedia based on the German Wikipedia. And you can access this also by the link given here. And one, let's say, fun site uh, information um, that, that you might know. So people in my institute also taking care of the lab course of this lecture, they are also taking care here of the German version of DBpedia. But we will talk about the international version. We talk about the English version. In general, as we have already said, DBpedia is based on Wikipedia. And you know, for example, here we have the example of carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, of course, has a specific URI in Wikipedia. So it's this URI you see here on top of the page. So it's uh, enwikipedia.org slash wiki slash carbon dioxide. And the corresponding DBpedia URI describing carbon dioxide is quite similar. So you have then here dbpedia.org slash resource because it's a resource we are talking about and the resource name is carbon dioxide. And as you see here, the web page of Wikipedia contains here on the side a table, which is the so-called info box for many of its instances. And exactly from this kind of structure data, DBpedia is extracted and created. And we will talk about 
that process sooner or later. Okay, clicking now on exactly the link of carbon dioxide within DBpedia, you will get back, if you do this with your browser, a human readable HTML page, representation of the knowledge that is there in DBpedia. Of course, if you do, we know that by HTTP content negotiation and ask for an RDF, serialized version of that data, you will get an RDF encoded version of that page. Okay, but of course you can have a look and you see there that you have here this as a headline carbon dioxide, which is always a subject here. And then you have here all the properties and then you have the values of these properties for exactly this kind of subject for carbon dioxide. The naming conventions are not so easy, but you know, here we have here the Wikipedia page for something and the corresponding DBpedia page. So here the suffix, the name of the thing, is always exactly the same. So carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, the same way written. Um, the main entity is identified via, we know this already, then dbpedia slash resource slash carbon dioxide. And with the HTTP content negotiation, the human readable HTML version then is related to dbpedia.org slash page slash carbon dioxide. And for example, then here the RDF XML based version is dbpedia.org slash data carbon dioxide. So these are different URLs for this entity, depending which version, which language version you want to download here. Okay, we said dbpedia has been created from Wikipedia info boxes. And depending of the type of subject you are looking for in Wikipedia, you have different kind of Infobox templates. So for carbon dioxide, there is a template here for chemical compounds and chemical elements. Greta Thunberg here, for example, for a person, there is a specific template. For locations like Karlsruhe, they have a specific template. For, this is a movie, the An Inconvenient Truth, they have something like that. Or here for organizations uh, and events, they have also a template here for school strike for climate, for example. Okay. How does it work then? The extraction process to create dbpedia is more or less simple. So you know already what is the subject. So the subject, of course, is um, derived from the Wikipedia original page. So you see here for an inconvenient truth, we simply take the suffix an inconvenient truth and um, relate to it uh, the dbpedia.org domain and of course here resource because we are talking about the entity. So this will be our subject in the first statement is, that is extracted. And then you are looking for a property here in that table. Uh, and of course, they are ordered in that table at a specific place. And therefore, this is directed by will be directly then a become a property. And then here, um, Davis Guggenheim, it's another link. So this is the director of exactly that movie. And then um, Davis Guggenheim, since this link is also connected to Wikipedia, you can create for that also again a dbpedia uri and then this is the first uh, triple that you extract which says an inconvenient truth has the director davis guggenheim it's as easy as that but of course the devil is in the details so it's not so easy this kind of extraction because wikipedia is maintained by humans and not everybody understands these kind of tables in exactly the same way or uses let's say the basic principles like in a database you use a table so you have multi-valued stuff in there and so on and so on so it's not so easy and um, yeah so th therefore there are often then also kind of errors in dbpedia um, what is also important is the category system behind, which means the ontologies, which are used there to make clear what do the things really mean. And there is a dbpedia ontology. You can access it here exactly with uh, that kind of link. And you see here a short segment of these classes, which are there. So this is part of the taxonomy that is there in DB, of the dbpedia ontology. You have, for example, a chemical substance, and then you have subclasses there like chemical compound, chemical element, drug, and so on. And among the drugs, you have, for example, combination drug, monoclonal antibody, or vaccine. Of course, this is rather selective and not necessarily the best possible top-down ontology. But coming up with a top or upper ontology is a difficult task. 
Let's see how this then works. We have here, and I use here prefixes, which are resolved down here on the left. We have carbon dioxide is of type chemical compound. And according to that ontology, to the DBpedia ontology, a chemical compound is a subclass of a chemical substance, which is subclass, <coughs> excuse me, of a thing. So this is the DBpedia ontology as one of the backbones of DBpedia. There is another category system which can be used. So if you remember Wikipedia, most of the Wikipedia pages have down on the button, they show you categories in which exactly these articles are categorized. And these categories again also are organized in a hierarchical fashion. This is not really the same like classes and subclasses. This is more like a, a category system with, let's say, more general and more specific categories ordered in exactly this kind of order relation. And therefore, carbon dioxide is not of type greenhouse gas. It's, it has a subject. So this is like a keyword or uh, it's um, associated to the class uh, greenhouse gas to the category greenhouse gas sorry so carbon dioxide is or has the subject greenhouse gas greenhouse gas is connected with other concepts like for example global warming and global warming is a broader concept than greenhouse gas and climate change again is another broader concept compared to global warming and global environmental issues is a broader concept compared to climate change this is a rather interesting category system. It comprises more than 1.5 million categories. Compared to the DBpedia ontology, this only has around 700, 800 classes. So this is not so large. Okay, and last but not least, another way to access directly DBpedia is a Sparkle endpoint. So in this lecture later on, you will learn Sparkle as a query language for exactly that knowledge graph. And then we will also make use and show you how exactly this Sparkle endpoint works and how you can get directly sophisticated Sparkle queries to work based on the knowledge graph of DBpedia. Okay, that's it more or less for DBpedia. But of course, there are more knowledge graphs and we want to show you at least another one which is strictly speaking, not really a knowledge base, but nevertheless, it's a knowledge graph. And this is Wikidata. So in the next lecture, we have an excursion of the Wikidata or about the Wikidata knowledge graph.